God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that each day, each experience that we go through, there is a lesson to learn. Sometimes it's reaping. Sometimes it's sowing. Many times it's just sacrificing. But Lord, whatever you call us to do, may we do it in the spirit of Christ. May we do it because we know that that's what you're calling us to do. And do it gladly. And do it with the spirit of Christ. And we thank you, Father, that we are learning to do that. I just give you the praise and glory now as the word of God comes forth that you will open every heart and that the spirit of wisdom and revelation might just shine into us that we might know God in a greater way which changes us as we do. And we thank you now for it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. First scripture on the board will be in 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's start with verse 12. It'll be up on the board. As the speaker brings the word of God, there's things that I will probably bring out that you don't know. And yet, as you look at that and expose your heart to the word of God, God will show you things that I won't even mention. Now, first, we want to find out who's speaking. Well, we know it's, it's Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he says, so I intend always to remind you about these things. I tell you, when I read that, all kinds of thoughts go into my mind. Some things I just don't want to be reminded of. How many out there is like that? Please don't remind me of that. But he's saying, I intend always to remind you about these things, although indeed you know them and are firm in the truth that you now whole. Sometimes when you go to church or you read the Word of God or you're studying, you're studying on something you already know. And yet, what you already know can get larger and larger and larger. And this is what you'll find as you walk with God. You will find He'll get larger and larger and larger and give you more and more truth and bless you more and more, which will enable you to do and give more and more. See, that's a, that's a word, that's a word in, in the scripture that um, for those that have received much, much is required of them. Yes. So remember that many times we talk with one another uh, just to remind each other. Sometimes when I go out the door, you know, Susan might say, now, I mean, how many of you ever say, uh, drive careful? Drive carefully, you know. We, we, I know that, you have to tell. <laughs> how, many felt, how many felt that way, huh? That's a good test on your, on your character. I know to drive careful. And you go out and get in the car and you back up into the neighbor's car. There's a lot of things when you come to church you have already know. But I aim, I'm like Peter, I aim to remind you again and again. Because I know it's got to get embedded into the recesses of our being before we really know. Yeah, you know, you take uh, uh, anything that, that you have learned intellectually, mentally you know it, but when you go through the experience of it, we're going to find out really what's going to come out. Anybody out there? <laughs> Has anything been coming out of you this week that <clears throat> wouldn't be too godly? Raise your hand if that be so. Okay, welcome to the club. But I'm here to remind you, that's okay. Because every time you go through that experience, you're going to learn something, not just an intellectual way that you can explain it and you look like you are a professor. But you know that you know, 
and you have an understanding which comes from God, it's God's understanding that you understand the situation that you just went through. Now, how many understand what I just said? How many didn't? How many is awake? Okay, just checking. Some of you are just not, you're not moving any kind of way. I don't even know if you're alive. I'll send one of my men out there to check, see if you're alive. How many love me this morning? Yeah, when I finish this message, we'll find out really if you love me. <laughs> Susan back there now. Oh, let's read that again. That's powerful. Mm. So I intend always to remind you about these things. Although indeed you do them and are firm in the truth that you now hold. Let's go to the next verse. I think it's right as long as I am in this tabernacle, this tent, this body. Now notice what he says there. How many sees the revelation there in that verse of scripture? I think it's right as long as I am in this tabernacle, tent, body. I thought, Peter, I thought your tent, your body, your tabernacle, I thought that was you. How many sees the revelation of that? What do you see in that? Somebody tell me. The real person, right, Mike? Mike sees it. My spirit is still in this time. But like, that's who I am. I'm a spirit being. How many see that in that verse of Scripture? See, that's where revelation of the Holy Spirit, when you're walking in the Spirit, you see things that other people don't see. People think that, that, uh, that their body is them. No, that's just your tent. That's your tabernacle. That, that ain't you. That's a temporary tent. One day you'll have an eternal tent, an eternal body. Now, I know you know that. But I intend to keep telling you that again and again. And I think it's only right for me to remind you that this is just a passing hour down here and everything that's ever happened to you that's bad down here, God's going to cause good to come out of it. One, two, that's good. Two people show I'm getting through now. God will keep reminding you to you. Everybody, yeah, that's right. I think it's right as long as I am in this tabernacle. I am, I am. What are you talking about, Peter. Well, don't you guys know that I'm just a spirit being down here living in this body and all this is temporary down here? But I keep going to keep reminding you of some things that you need. While you're down here, you need to remember. Thank you. Appreciate that back there. All right, let's go to the next verse. Not, to stir you up. Oh, boy, stir you up. I'm going to stir you guys up. Stir you up. I think it's right as long as I, since I know that the laying aside of this body of mine. Oh, now what do you see in that? Say spirit. Go ahead, say spirit. spirit. Say I'm a spirit being. Spirit. How many see spirit in there? One, two, three, four, five. Am, am I coming through? I keep reminding you that when you read the scriptures, that he is talking about the natural part of his being, which is temporary, his body, his tabernacle, his tent. I am a spirit. Since I know that the laying aside of this body of mine, which he's living in right at the moment, will come speedily, as our Lord Jesus Christ made it clear to me. Isn't that amazing? He knew that he was about to lay down this old body. Mm-hmm. How many in here would like to know when you're going to lay down your body for good? How many would like to know that? One, two, three, four. The rest of you don't want to know it. Because you'd have to change, right? <laughs> See, if you, let's just say that next week at this time you'll be in heaven. And you know it. What kind of decisions would you make today? It's a powerful thought. But look what it says. Speedily will come speedily as the Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. So you can know maybe at times the Lord might tell you next week you're going to be with me in heaven. Then you'll run down and just uh, uh, buy all kind of stuff and get it on your credit card. 
because you're not going to be around to pay for it. So yeah. Uh, and the Lord said, the Lord knows your thinking, so he'll save you from that. Reminds me of the guy that uh, went to the doctor. The doctor examined him and called him in the office and says, you got three months to live. Oh, it was, that, was, that was just horrible, you know. But he went home and said, Phew. It's a good side, side, side to this. I'm just going to go get me the biggest car I want and buy me a big house. He bought all kind of stuff, put it on his credit card. And he's sitting by the pool and everything, the, the phone rings. And he says, you know, the doc, it was the doctor. He says, you know, I was wrong about you. I gave you the wrong report. You're going to live a long time. <laughs> and he's thinking, I got to pay all that back. <laughs> We just have to be reminded sometimes that God loves me, that everything's going to be all right. You're going to win out, you're going to win, and you're going to come out on top. And sometimes you have to talk to yourself. How many in here talks to yourself? Okay, how, ma how many in here does self-talk back to you? <laughs> I, I talk to myself. All right, go to the next verse. Next verse. Moreover, I will diligently endeavor to see to it that even after my departure, decease, you may be able at all times to call these things to mind. So Peter was very concerned about the people of that day and very concerned that he wanted to know that they knew some things and even when he's gone, he wants to, he wants to fix it where uh, they will still be able to remember. I thank God for these DVDs. When I'm long gone, you can get one of my DVDs or anybody else in here and listen to it. You'd be surprised how God will use it. Yep, he sure will. Go to the next verse. Now, we're getting down to the core of the matter here. For we were not following cleverly devised stories when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, grandeur, authority of sovereign power. So many people, you know, they, they intellectually are trying to figure out God. Intellectually, they're trying to know God. You know God by revelation. God reveals himself to people. Somebody said, well, I'm an atheist. Don't let it bother you. Until God shows himself to that person, that person will intellectually try to figure it all out, get all tangled up, get all messed up, and trying to get everybody else to think, well, there's no God. Well, Brother Bob, how do, you, how do you know you're a Christian? Very simple. God has showed me that I'm a Christian. He has showed me that I am a son of God. God bears witness. Listen to this. God bears witness with my brain. No. no. With my soul? No. With my intellect? No. no. With my spirit? that I am a child of God. And if you don't have that revelation yet, you better bow your head and say, God, I want to know by revelation that I am your child. Because you see, all doubt will go. All doubt will go because you know that God himself has showed it to you. And I'm going to say this too. Your life will show it. You won't be doing the same old, same old. Now you're not going to be perfect. <coughs> but you're going to have a lot of different manifestations in your life. So there's so many people are trying to figure out God in their little old brain. They're just going to burn all their, all their little things out. They're just going to get all confused. And besides that, you can't, you can't see. You know why you can't see? 
Because the God of this world has blinded the unbeliever from the light of the gospel. Anybody listening? Yes, Satan himself, the God of this world, that's Satan, has blinded them. They're blind. Floyd, would you come up here for a moment? My eyes are shut. I can't see. Can you lead me? Lead me. Watch this. Step down. Step down. Step down again. Where you want to go? I don't know. (laughs) I'll take you. I don't know if I trust you or not. He was leading me somewhere. (laughs) You can't expect a blind person to see. But that's where we come in to pray. Lord, may your revelation hit that brother or that sister in such a way that they can see by the Spirit. What does it say up here? Not by might, not by, but what? But by my Spirit. We owe our birth to God. We were all blind, blinded by the God of this world. And God performed a divine miracle upon us, opened up our spirit mind and spirit, and we could behold and see the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming down, it wasn't some mental thing that he knew. He knew by the Spirit of God, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And if your sins have been taken away, what sin do you have? Woo! I mean, that makes sense to me. That's how powerful the blood of Christ is. But he's made provision. If you do mess up, don't say you didn't. Admit, com, admit it. Admit it. Is that a word? Just admit it. Yeah, that's pretty good. And repent of it and confess and say, God, forgive me. Is God faithful? Is God just? To do what? Forgive you and what? Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Wow. Those statements alone. And all of this is done by the Holy Spirit. I know that I am forgiven. How? Well, the Word of God says it. But God has made it alive to me by His Spirit. Not by might. No, by His Spirit. So many people in the church today don't understand that that, that, that Jesus is alive. And He sent His Holy Spirit down here. And uh, would you just put that on the board real quick again? John 15, uh, 26, 15, 26. Look at this. Powerful. That's why connecting with the Holy Spirit. And when the comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who comes proceeding from the Father, he himself will testify regarding me. How many of you understand that? Raise your hand if you do. So it's the Holy Spirit that testifies that Jesus is the Savior of the world. And when John saw the Lord come, he said, oh, there's the lamb. Somebody said, ain't no lamb, that's a man. Try to tell John that. No, he's the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Who showed John that? Somebody tell me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Spirit. Everybody say "Holy Holy Spirit. He's holy. He's the one that teaches us. Notice that scripture. He's our counselor. He's the one that comforts us. He's the one that helps us. He's our advocate. He's our intercessor. He's our strengthener. Boy, have I been using that this week. The Lord is my strength. 
See, we've got to get our mind off of the natural. We've got to get our mind on God that he has sent the Holy Spirit to teach us, to direct us, to guide us, to testify to us who Christ is. And some people, they, you know, well, you know, all that. You can't take that literally. Well, my goodness. You know how I know that God loves me? Let me tell you. Because he first loved me. I love him because he first loved me. Let me tell you about some folks. You just got to love them. You don't have to agree with uh, their whatever they do wrong or nothing, but you love them anyway. You just love people. You know how you know, how you know that, uh, that, that God's love is manifested in your heart, in your life? Because you just love people. No, there's no straining. There's no grunting. No, you just love them. With what? With the love of God that's been shed in our heart by the Holy Ghost. See, we've got to go back to God and realize it is God in us that causes us to do what we do. What, what is your motive of doing things? Right. Well, I like to do this, or I like to do that, or I like for everything to be this way, and I like to do I, 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 I. We're like Paul in, in Romans. Uh, yeah, that's right. You got it. <laughs> Romans 7, verse 14. He had eye trouble. I me, I this, I that, I this. And then he finally got revelation. And here's the revelation he got. He said, who shall set me free? Who? Not what? Not a set of laws? But who shall set me free from this law of sin and death? And the answer comes in chapter 8. For the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. It's the Spirit of God operating, moving in our lives. I know you know this, but I aim to remind you of this as long as I'm with you. Amen. Thank you, appreciate that. So we may have to rethink some things and begin to say, Lord, you know, some folks like that, like the prophet. I think it was the prophet Isaiah. Oh, I dwell among a people of unclean lips. <laughs> and then the revelation of God came into him. And you know what he said after the revelation came in? Woe is me who dwells in the midst of people with unclean lips. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Oh, I know you know this. But I just want to continue to remind you that when I'm gone, the reason you're saved is because you got, you're just good looking. You got a nice job. You're educated. No. You got brand new shoes. No. You're saved because before the foundation of the world, God chose you to be his child. Amen. It started with God and it will end with God. Amen. And it's God all the way through. And see, when that revelation comes in, you'll say this, I am what I am, like Paul, by the grace of God. It is God. Oh, some of you can't quite grab it, but I aim to keep reminding you. da 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 da, -da. Yeah. I absolutely keep reminding you, it's God. And somehow, when you come to that revelation, 
you come into a rest. You just come into a rest in God. And you learn to cast all your cares upon him for you know he cares for you. He had it all planned out before you got on this planet. He knows where you're at right now and he knows where you're going to be a long way down the road. God began a good work in us and I will continue that work. What? Did I miss that? Let's see, go back. God has begun a good work in me and I, and I will... No. What? No. no. Oh, oh, thank you so much. No, he will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. And he is faithful, faithful to do what he says. Now, let's move on. A little bit more time yet. Look at verse 17. Here we go. For when he was invested with honor and glory from God the Father, a voice was born to him by the splendor, majesty, glory in the bright cloud that overshadowed him, talking about Jesus, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and delight. People say, well, I wonder who Jesus Christ is. Well, uh, God the Father says he's, he, he's Jesus, he's his son. So this great professor says, well, I, I, you know, I don't believe that Jesus is, 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 is God's son. No, wait a minute. God said that Jesus was his son. And, presser, and, and Professor Doomdobble said he wasn't. Now, which one are you going to believe? Huh? Going to believe God because God cannot lie. And uh, I don't know anything about Professor, you know, who he ever he is. But I tell you what, I believe God and God says. Yes, sir, Peter was saying that when we were up there on that mountain, Mount Transfiguration, we saw the Son of God glorified along with two prophets. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And when Jesus was baptized and John the Baptist putting him under, when a dove came down on him and God spoke again. Now I know you guys know this, but I'm going to remind you again. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now either you have the revelation or you don't. And I encourage people, if they don't, Lay aside a lot of your stinking thinking and get into the word of God and be, get right with God and say, Lord, I want to know the truth. And God will reveal himself to all those that have a hungry heart and have a heart after him. And he will reveal. And then when you stand up and give your testimony, it'll have great influence on people. Because they'll say, hey, there's a man that knows God. There's a woman that knows God. Because what's flowing out of them, my spirit, is tes being te my spirit testifies to that. They know God. How many people in here, you've heard people speak and you say, boy, they missed it good. You might be saying that about me. I don't know, but I still love you. But it's just a, something about people that walk with God that you just want to be around them. There's a, there one, there's a oneness there. There's a oneness there. And if you're sort of following afar off, when you're around somebody like that, you want to get further away from them. <laughs> How many you understand that? All right. That's right. But see, we have to sometimes hear something over and over and over. And, and, and Peter knew that. Now let's move on just real quick like. 
And we're going to get this finished up here just a little bit. All right, go to the next verse. We actually heard this voice board out of heaven, for we were together with him on the holy mountain, a mountain of transfiguration. So here's Peter. Now, either Peter, you're the biggest liar in the world, or you tell him the truth. See, that's what people have to decide. Peter says, I saw him. Touched him. People say, well, you know, if somebody would uh, come back from the dead and, and, and talk to me about it, I might believe. No, you won't. The only way to know God is God himself reveals himself to you by his spirit. Right. Are you listening? See, I'm telling you this over and over where you won't just keep, people won't just keep going the other way because you're going to meet a lot of people out there and you need to help them. And you're going to help them and say, you really want to know God? Then tell God, I really want to know you. Just talk to him. Tell him, Lord, I really would like to know you. And if you mean that in your heart, he'll reveal himself to you. That's why the Bible says, if I will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice this. And believe in thy brain. Believe in thy what? The heart. The spirit man. That's the heart. The heart is the spirit man. When you believe in your spirit man, by that revelation that God gives to you, then you're saved. So many people, they join a church, they don't realize that they got to be born again. I was reading, and, and the reason I'm bringing this up, because on the internet I've seen so many different testimonies of, of people saying, well, you know, I'm an atheist now, you know, I, I was a Christian, and I'm thinking, boy, they never was a Christian. They knew something about God. They knew God intellectually, but not by the Spirit. Did you know I know you by the Spirit? Now it makes some of you ner nervous, don't it? Oh yeah, when you walk in the Spirit and you live long enough in the Spirit, you know one another in the Spirit. It's quiet in here. And you know I'm telling the truth. We know each other by the Spirit. Paul says that in Corinthians. I know no man after the flesh anymore. I, I used to know Christ that way, but not anymore. I know them by the Spirit. It's not that we're a big brain or anything like that. It's just that the Spirit manifests himself in that way. We know by the Spirit of God. And it's amazing how God teaches us by his spirit. Not by might, but by his spirit. Wow, Peter, you saw the Lord on the mountain. And we have the prophetic word made firmer still. You will do well to pay close attention to it as to a lamp sh shifting in a dis dismal, squirtle, and dark place until the day breaks through the gloom and the morning star rises, comes into being in your hearts. Go to the next verse. Yet first you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of any personal or private or special interpretation, loosening or solving. Next scripture. This is the last one. For no prophecy ever originated because some man willed it to do so. It never came by human impulse, but men spoke from God who were born along, moved and impelled by the Holy Spirit. So when someone prophesies, it's either from his spirit or it's by the spirit of God. And we have to be able to discern. That's why it's important that we understand each other's spirits. I can understand what spirits. You know, you know the, uh, Jesus and the, uh, 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 the uh, disciples were coming through Samaria. And they were getting a little teed off at the Samaritans because they didn't want Jesus to come through their territory. And, 
And of course, you know, the disciples, they were not quite tuned up yet in the spirit. And they said, well, Lord, you want us to uh, send fire down and consume these folks. And uh, Jesus said, yeah, let it roll, boys. <laughs> Some of us would agree to that, you know, yeah, let, let, wipe them out. <laughs> You don't know what spirit you are of. So let's get down to where we are. Do you know what spirit you are of? Now the sweat pops out. But you know, I'd rather face the truth now. then stand before the judgment seat of Christ because, see, everything's going to be exposed. See, there's a serious uh, side to this coming to church, you know. Well, Bob, you'll run people off. No, I won't. I'll run them off that, that are in the flesh. But those that are in the spirit and know truth and want to know truth because they know that if they know the truth, they'll be set free. We'll say amen, amen and blend in with God. Do you know what type of spirit you are of? I think that's a good question for all of us. Bob, yes, that's me. Do you know what spirit you are of? Yes, I do, because you've showed me, Lord. And at times it was ugly. Anybody been there besides me? But thank God for his grace. And I said, Lord, I don't want that ugly spirit no more. I don't want stinking thinking and I don't want that ugly spirit anymore. Because you see, I've come into that revelation knowledge that only God can change me. And honey child, if you're still trying to change yourself, bless your heart. You are the most miserable of all men. It is such a relief to say, God, you started this, and you said you're going to complete it. And I thank you, Lord. You're right. I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn, Lord. Yes, Lord, I won't mention those other things, but I'm stubborn, Lord. And God knew it all along, and he loved me all along. And he loves you all along, even though some of you are stubborn. Well, I don't love you anymore, Pastor Bob. Well, you never loved me to start with. Because I'm going to love you, love you, and love you. Because I can't help it. Because the love of God's been shed in my heart by the Holy Ghost. And the only thing I can do is love you. I might not like what you said, but I'm going to love you. Is that the way you are? You ain't. Lord, you better say, Lord, change me. Because he says in his word, we're being changed from ugly, no. I mean, to, <laughs> change me, Lord. Changing me from what? Glory to glory. Well, I got, the, I got that glory. Hallelujah. I've arrived at last. No, you ain't because there's another glory and 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 another glory. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm telling you, there's glory after glory because God is so awesome. God is so pure. God is so holy. And if he showed himself Totally, absolute, 100% to us. You ever seen a fried potato burnt to a crisp? You never seen that before? Yeah. No, little by little. And how, what did our sister say? Up here, she testified to that very thing. And so as you, you know you're growing because, because little by little, little by little, you're feeling different. You're feeling lighter. You're feeling loved. You, you, you like people. You, you love people. It, it, it begins to manifest in your life. 
Say, if I needed a $20 bill right now, I know where I could go. Where's Rick? Oh, there he is right there. <laughs> Watch him reach for his pocketbook. Ain't you reaching, son? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll get on this side over here. <laughs> and what am I saying? I'm going to say it again and again. It is God from the beginning. Don't be discouraged where you're at. Open your heart more to him and let him change you by his spirit from glory to glory. And one day as he finishes us, when he brings us off of that potter's wheel, and he'll say, my son Jesus, Another duplicate of Jesus. And that's his aim. That's his goal. So some of the things you're going through, I know you just got married, but some of the things you're going through right now, God's changing you and you from glory. Boy, did I mean, I didn't know God worked double time when I got married. I mean, he began to work double time. How many can say amen to that? Uh, look at there's one right here, yeah. Know that he loves you right where you're at. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. While I was yet a sinner, he loved me. He died for me. How much more will he do for us now? Yes. See, understand what he's doing. He ain't going to leave us like he, us is. He's changing us. Yeah. <sighs> From glory to glory. And let's pray. Father, I thank you. That we don't understand some things in this whole world, but we know that the Holy Spirit can show us things that we don't understand. And I thank you that you are showing us, every one of us, things in our lives that, that are not right, things in our life that are right. And we want to thank you, but it's you that changes us to that next glory, that we might glorify you in all that we say and do. And that our answer will be either yes or no. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen.